a BOX has arrived. I tore into this like a ravenous lion. I knew what this was. This was from Lexmark's 567. This was an eBay find. Uh, whoever the seller was, you know, he got it on eBay. Uh, got this for me for my birthday, which is coming up. And uh, they packed this really well. There's bubble wrap, there's more bubble wrap, there's paper, more bubble wrap, and bubble wrap inside of paper, inside of bubble wrap. And when you take all of that away, it reveals this. This is the Vox Clock 2. This one is not in great shape. It's in working condition, we can say. It's a little cube. Actually, not even quite a cube. This one... I, I wish I knew what the fuck people do to their stuff. The dents in it. It's like... it. it you know, th this is what it looked like in the auction picture. And then it's like melty in the back. See, it's like kind of melty. I have some shitty batteries in it now. I will put real batteries in here eventually. Even the switch over here, it's like melty there. Missing the battery cover, but uh, I just had to have this. Why? When I was a kid, we used to go over to my grandfather's house for pretty much all of the holidays. Always had a good time there. This was the Vox Clock 2, and it was made... Uh, by Radio Shack. I think it was Micronta branded, but it just says Vox Clock 2. At my grandfather's house, there was one of these on a shelf in the den. It was just there. It always had batteries in it. It always worked. And when I was four or five years old, I used to take this and piss off all of the adults. And thought I was so cool doing it. This is a talking clock. That's all it is. You press the button and it says the time. But this is 1980s technology here. So it's got that cool like fucking almost speak and spell language in it. Which is pretty awesome. Here we go. It's 4.56 p.m. That is awesome. I can't get enough of that. It's 4.57 p.m. The compression involved in this, because I think what they did was similar to the Speak and Spell, where they actually had uh, somebody voice record, you know, actually record all of these sound samples, and then they were compressed really, really, really... Uh, deeply to fit into the constraints and memory constraints of uh, 1980s computer technology. So if you listen to when he says it's, it's not it's, it's it. It's 4.57 p.m. You hear a lot of that like 8-bit. It's 4.57 p.m. <laughs> going on in there and it's awesome it has a uh, there's an alarm you can set not demonstrating that it does have a chime on the hour that was never turned on at my grandfather's house he actually had uh, a model after this I don't remember what it was exactly but it sounded exactly the same and looked almost the same there was a second switch on the back I think Dynatrack has videos of like all of them but we can set it to quiet mode, like that. It's 4.58 p.m. And back to loud. It's 4.58 p.m. Here's a closer sound. It's 4.58 p.m. So you definitely hear a lot of that, like, 8-bit going on. But like I said, I used to take this thing... I think it's supposed to sit like this on a desk, but 
it was always sitting on the shelf in my grandfather's house like that. And you could walk up to it and, you know, you got to kind of hold it because otherwise you just push it. It's 4.59 p.m. <sighs> just awesome. I used to piss off all of the adults because if you press the button... It's 4.59 p.m. But if you press it rapidly... p.m. So I used to do that and piss off the adults. It's, 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 it's... Oh, man. Those were the days, but the sound of this thing. We're just going to hang out because it's almost 5, so it'll do the chime and say it's 5 p.m. It's 5 p.m. That's it. That's all it does. It tells the time. It's 5 p.m. That's all it does. Great for blind people because you can feel the button there because it is raised like that. So if you had it, you could feel, oh, there's the time thing. Oh, here we are. It's 5 p.m. And you could do that. Uh, I, I don't know what else to really say about it except this was one of those sounds from my childhood that I, I always wanted one of these because what happened was when my grandfather passed away, his wife, and I'm not going to say my grandmother because this was his third wife, and that was not exactly, it didn't end up panning out the way you might think. <clears throat> his first wife, who I never met, died before I was ever born. His second wife, they were only married for like a year and it just wasn't working out. They got a divorce. And then he married this other lady whose name was Sheila. Uh, we called her Aunt Sheila, but she was essentially a step-step-grandmother, if you would. And, you know, step-step-grandma Sheila, and it doesn't work. So we just called her Aunt Sheila, and that was it. She was given um, the keys to the house when he died and said that uh, in his will that she could live there as long as she likes rent free in other words she wouldn't have to pay all of the siblings uh, and there were four at the time uh, one has passed since um, but there were four at the time and uh, she would not have to pay any sort of rent to anybody uh, to live there so um, a couple of years went by and finally she said, you know what, I don't need this house anymore. I want to move closer to my son or my daughter or something. So we all got to go in the house and go through stuff. And of all of the things in that house I wanted, this was it. And it was taken. I don't know if Sheila took it, if one of, the, uh, one of my aunts and uncles took it. I don't know. But it was not available for me. That's not to say I didn't get stuff. I have a Micronta green alarm clock that I think I did a video about. Uh, I'm pretty sure I did. I'll, I'll put a link for that in the prescription. Uh, there was a telephone. I forget the model. 2554 seems to ring a bell. Western Electric, but that could be wrong. I have a video with that somewhere. Um... I'll put a link for that in the prescription. There was a Fisher stereo, and that has since died, but I still have the speakers. In fact, let me show that to you. There is a Micronta clock, and if we back up the Fisher speakers, one here and one here, I've had to replace the woofers uh, in them because the foam on them had rotted. And I think that's the old Fisher set. Yeah, it is. Complete with remote control. It's dead. It's waiting for a restoration that I'm not going to do. Um, but it's here, nonetheless. So, that's it. That's all I wanted to show. Bit of a story with it. Always wanted this, just for that 
It's 5.06 p.m. Oh, man, that just takes me back. 36 years. It's 5.06 p.m. There's something about the early 80s speech synthesis, no matter how they did it, whether they did the, um, the speak and spell kind of deal, or this is actually synthesized, and I really don't think it is. I think it's actual sound samples in here, because that's typically what they were doing in those days. Just really, really compressed. Um, all around the most awesome thing ever. And there's never been anything quite like this. There may have been a couple other gadgets around that had the same voice, but other than that, this was like one of a kind. They had the Vox Clock, the Vox Clock 2, and maybe a 3 or 4. I, I don't remember. Dynatrack has videos on all that kind of stuff. Um, but I had to have one of these, and Lexmark's 567 was kind enough to send me this for my birthday so i love that kind thank you so much lex this takes me back 36 years it's 5 7 p.m oh yeah so i just have this in the awful list sitting right there and it chimes on the hour and i'm like what is the oh yeah the vox clock ah oh, just loved the voice in this thing Totally awesome, and even is LGR approved with the wood grain. So that's it. Thank you very kindly for watching. Make sure you click like. Make sure you click subscribe. And uh, click that button. It's 5.08 p.m. Because it is 4.20 somewhere. All right. Thanks again, and take care. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.